Hey guys, Comedy Interviews, we are here with Miss Fortune. If you guys could introduce your name, position in the band. My name is Mikey and I'm the lead singer. I'm Harley Graves and I play guitar. All right, so guys, first off, how's this tour been for you guys so far? You're finally at the famous Chain Reaction here in Anaheim, California. Yeah. How does it feel? It feels amazing, man. We put, we put so much hard work and effort into like making this band and getting it, you know, to where we're, we can go on tour and you know do these bigger shows and stuff. And this is a his historical place. It means everything to us to be here. So yeah. it's awesome. And you guys were just on your first tour ever, like pass with Icy Stars and like Masa Flames. How'd yeah. that go for you? It was awesome. Icy Stars, those guys treated us really good. You know, we're on the same label with them, so we definitely made a good relationship out of it. Like Masa Flames, those dudes were cool. Ghost Town, everybody on that tour was just, that, that was so much fun. That was the best first tour we could have ever done, so definitely. it was, was a, great. Definitely a party every single day. <laughs> every day, every night. So what's a good story from those parties? I learned to never trust a man wearing a sombrero. <laughs> We were in between Pittsburgh and Cleveland, Ohio, and we stopped at a Walmart parking lot, and we decided, me and Ian decided to go uh, get drunk at this Mexican restaurant, and a man wearing a sombrero offered me way too much tequila. I took all of it, and I didn't stop puking for the next two days. I remember that. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, my favorite story is, uh, let's see, I, I guess like one of the most memorable things is I would get up on stage with Icy Stars like every night and sing Filth Friends Unite with them right. and uh, yeah that was a lot of fun so those those crowds were so, like, so pumped up and just it was fun singing alongside Devin and, and those guys so yeah it was cool. Alright so we're gonna talk about the formation of the band a little bit just because it is unique you guys are from all different states pretty much Yeah. and so I know that you and Josh were both on YouTube but how did everyone else meet and how did that sort of form? Um, well, we all met on social media, basically how, how we met each other. Um, a couple of us kind of knew each other beforehand, but really, I mean, we were all complete strangers coming into this, you know, musically. And, uh, you know, this is one of my good friends from Tulsa. We're both from the same state. We're the only ones that kind of have that in common. Those and buddies. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, and then you know, Josh, of course, is from Phoenix. You know, he's he's fantastic. You know, YouTube sensation. And uh, and Ian, you know, he graduated from Full Sail. He got his degree in audio engineering and stuff. So, you know, just got like a melting pot of talent. Our uh, our drummer, he's 16. We just pulled him out of high school to to do this with us, and he's killing it. So. It's cool, man. Everybody's like from a different place, but everybody brings their own things to the table, so it kind of makes it worth it. Um, you know, it's logistically kind of challenging sometimes, but creatively, it's it's like a dream come true. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, let's talk about the writing, recording process, and whatnot. Who starts like the first move in like writing a song? Um, a lot of times, uh, Josh will start writing a song kind of instrumentally. Uh, you know, he'll like tab it out and, and kind of just like make a skeleton of the song and then he'll like pitch it to us and if we like it, you know, we'll pursue, you know, kind of like demoing it out and everybody kind of putting their own flair on it and, uh, and stuff. So that's usually how it goes down and then the vocals always come last. I, I always, you know, wait until the, the instrumental is pretty solid and we have like the structure and kind of the feel of the song down and, um, I don't know. It's cool. These guys handle most of the the music and the re like recording, yeah. you know, stuff uh, as far as the instrumentals go. But I just do the vocals, and uh, everybody kind of has their their parts and stuff. But yeah, it's it's definitely a group effort at the end of the day. So. All right, and so you guys signed off of one track that had Tyler Carter in it. Explain that whole process, and also explain how Tyler Carter got involved. How did you guys first hear about you guys? Um, well, basically, I, I approached Tyler, um, and I had like a song that I had been writing, and it kind of like worked out with the situation that he was in at the time, which, you know, for those who know, uh, like him, like leaving Woe Is Me and stuff, and they like wrote like a really scathing song about him and like, you know, tried to embarrass him kind of. And I had a song that was kind of double sided. It was kind of like about how the music industry is like full of shit and how you shouldn't really like trust, you know, everything you hear and everybody, you know, so. Um, I don't know. It was cool. Like we kind of had something in common in that way. And so I approached him about doing the song as kind of like a, a backlash, you know, to that. And he was really into that idea. The song had a lot of attitude and it had like a lot of controversy around it. So people could really relate to the song and, and stuff. And, uh, 
And so that's pretty much how that how that made how that was made. That song was just straight passion and like you know it had like a, a meaning that that like meant something to a lot of people. So you know that's that's really what the song goes back to is like you know at the end of the day if your music is good and like people are hearing it and seeking you out you're gonna get found you know and because you know record labels are people too those are people who you know sit online and try to find new music and look for new bands and as long as you have something that they're interested in that they want to find you know that's what that song was for us it was a way for them to hear us and to take an interest and you know eventually you know start talking about like what we wanted to do in the future you know which is you know the music you hear now is what we ended up kind of going after but yeah, that song was definitely like a good demo, and it was good to like put it out there, you know, for free and and you know get some feedback and and just get some eyes on the band. But you know, we've kind of like moved on from that now and and just have like a new record and stuff. And yeah, it was yeah. Cool. So let's talk about that a little bit. In Double Threat of Danger, you guys had screaming, and then you've moved towards that, um, well, away from that, I guess you'd say, yeah. um, with you know more clean vocals, and then. I feel like each song on this record is also kind of sonically different yeah. and has different influences. So talk about that a little bit. How, why the album is so much different and why each song is even a little bit different from that. I think that whenever we were first uh, like p like putting out you know like the double threat, it, it was kind of like a I don't want to say like an immature song, but it was just like we hadn't really like found ourselves yet. We didn't really know yet at that time like what we were what it was like meant to be. And so after we finally all met up, you know, from different states and kind of got to feel each other out and like figure out what each other were into, we just kind of decided that like we were making music that wasn't exactly us. Like that that's what wasn't us. This now is us and it feels great to you know to finally have, you know, that breath of fresh air. Kinda, because I felt like if we would have kept going the other direction, we would have just been riding in a box, you know. And and eventually you can't get out of that box. And so I feel like with the style we've chosen now and like the route we decided to go, we can do just about anything that we want, and people will hopefully accept it. And some people don't get it, but the people that do get it, you know, are loving it. So we're just gonna keep, you know, making the music that we that we wish was out there, you know, like the the kind of music that we wish existed so you know if people like it great if they don't like it you know that's great too <laughs> we're, but we're gonna keep doing it you know we're just gonna do what we want so yeah, and yeah. So you guys recorded the album with Chris Crummett so how is that and why Chris Crummett out of every producer out there I, I personally had my eyes on Chris for a long time. I think he's like really fantastic with vocal production and just production in general. He's just kind of got that really like warm, like natural sounding tone to his recordings that I really love and you know I thought we all you know really enjoy. So it, for us, it was a really easy choice to go with Chris. He did exactly what we wanted him to do and. Uh, he had some great input and stuff, and he was just a pleasure to work with. And he took he took our vision seriously, and you know treated us well. So it, it was it was a great experience. Our, our time with Chris was really good. I mean, he really uh, he has like a respect for the band sound. He has a respect for what they want from their music. And the time that we uh, the time that we spent there, fantastic. Would totally go back again. I yeah. mean, it's just he uh, he just has this understanding of what the final product is in his head, and it's like he like moves towards that with every second that you go yeah. I mean, it was fantastic yeah and so I mean obviously it's a little early to start thinking about a new album but it sounds like you guys would go back to Chris for the second yeah we've definitely talked about doing that awesome. yeah all right and so uh, what's a personal favorite off this record for you guys my favorites ghost I, I love ghost Ghost is the most fun to play I, I'm personally, if I were to choose two songs that I like to play and listen to more than any others, it'd probably be Chasing Dreams and My Apologies, just because, I don't know, those songs really, uh, I don't know, they still really catch my ear sometimes, and I, I, I don't know, I just love those songs, so, yeah. Alright, so lastly guys, just let fans know what you guys are up to next after this tour. I know you guys are hopping on another tour, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we're going out on a, another tour starting tomorrow. We just now wrapped up with Hands Like Houses, Slaves, and Alive Like Me. Uh, and then we have, like, some more stuff planned in the fall that I'm not really allowed to talk about yet. But um, it's going to be awesome. I can't, I can't wait till it's announced. Because Ex expect the panties to fall off. The panties will one. drop. Yeah. I'll drop them right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we, we got some big stuff coming up, man. It's going to be awesome. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Pornhub. <laughs> we all like to stay connected. Facebook, Twitter, yeah, Instagram, we got it all. So, Wait, but you have to drop your Twitter because it's not Harley Graves. So, oh, uh, my Twitter is Baja Blasted with two cute little underscores at the end, <laughs> and mine is at Mikey Sawyer 4L. 4L. And the band is at Misfortune. Two words, two S's. Miss.
fortune. All right, guys. Kind of interview. Signing out. Take it easy.